The following show contains adult content. It's not our intent to offend anyone, but we want to inform you that if you are a child under the age of 18 or get offended easily, this next show may not be for you. The content, opinions, and subject matter of these shows are solely the choice of your show hosts and their guests, and not those of the Entertainment Network or any affiliated stations. Any comments or inquiries should be directed to those show hosts. Thank you for listening. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, bringing you the good times in music, fashion, pop culture, and entertainment. We got a fun show for you guys today. Before we say hi to everybody in the chat room, let's say hi to our cool, outrageous man about town co-host, Mr. Ron Russell. What's up, Ron? Oh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry. I didn't have lunch. I'm tired. <laughs> I was up all night last night watching the Academy Awards, and I was waiting for Betty Davis to win for Now Voyager, and then Jimmy said, Ron, it's not 1940, and this is the election. I said, oh, senility has set in. Alzheimer's or something. That's so funny. They want to know where your orange cup went. The orange cup is there too, but he's drinking chocolate milk out of a different one. So he's got two drinks today. It's hilarious. Um, so what's up, everybody in the chat room? Uh, we got a lot of people in there. Let me say some highs. If I miss you, I'm sorry because the thing goes by so fast. But we have Teresa Sabin from Teresa Sabin from Florida. We have Don Hinton. What's up? He's got a watch for you today, I think. And uh, he'll show you in a minute. Teresa Sabin. Cindy Lady Lake. Yay. Angela Joseph. What's up, Angela? Um, Boomer Mays, you guys, is in the chat room. Hey, Boomer, Boomer, you guys is a football superstar. And uh, let's see, Robert Dumont. Hello, Robert Dumont. Dave Davis, what's up? Um, it's not going fast enough now for me to see things. Uh, but we have a great show for you guys today. Oh, Backpack John is there. Um, we have Sherry N Nelson coming on, our favorite Canadian. And then we have Harley Wallen uh, coming on. He's got a brand new movie. And today's Harley's birthday. Yes, it is. He's 22. Yes. <laughs> On one leg, on one leg. Yeah, I actually don't know how old he is, but I saw pictures of his kids today, though, on the internet, and they were gorgeous. Yeah, well, they didn't take after him. <laughs> Holly, I love, but he ain't gorgeous, that's for sure. His wife is, though. Yeah, his wife is gorgeous. She's beautiful. Um, took after her, her, her. Let's see. You want to talk about my watch? Okay, here we go. The face of my watch says AIDS walk. I don't know. Where's my camera? Can you? Okay, can I do this? Oh, we also want to say why you're showing that. Okay, there you go. There you go. You can see it. I was presented this wristwatch by the guy, and I'm trying to remember his name, but he was a sweetheart of a fella. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he has passed away from AIDS. Um, he presented me with this wristwatch for all the work that I did with um, AIDS Walk. AIDS Walk is when we walked all over New York City. And also when I walked in Central Park, I always participated when I lived in Manhattan in all of the AIDS foundations. I worked for Amphar uh, with Elizabeth Taylor. Then I left Amphar and I went to work with Elizabeth Taylor on Elizabeth Taylor's, um, here it goes, Elizabeth Taylor's Foundation for AIDS Research. And I worked for them for a long time doing drag shows with a lot of very famous uh, impersonators. And we all worked for free. And we worked nightclubs and supper clubs. And all the money that we made, we gave to AMFA or the Elizabeth Taylor Foundation for AIDS Research. Yes, I have been in Elizabeth's company a few times. No, I never did interview her. Uh, as publicity puts out that she's one of the names that I've interviewed, I never did. She was a very big, big, legendary star. And to get near her to do that would be almost impossible. She would be willing, but her people would not. Uh, they were worried that the wrong question might be asked because I sort of had a reputation for being, you know, upfront and tell it like it is. And I ask questions and nobody dares to. So years went by and I saw Elizabeth on and off. And then when I was in Palm Springs, Elizabeth was here at the, at the uh, library doing or whatever and i asked her if i could interview her and she said ron i'm much too ill and she passed away shortly afterwards 
So that's the story about my beautiful wristwatch that I treasure. And I'm so honored that they gave it to me for my work in AIDS Walk. So we also want to give shout outs to. Uh, oh, wait a minute. One more thing. Oh. Um, Broadway Cares also gave me a crystal uh, paperweight with my name on it. And it said for all the work that Ron Russell has done for uh, uh, AIDS. It's perfect. That's a big plus in my life also that Broadway Cares does that, did that. So we also want to give a shout out. Danny McDermott's in the chat room and uh, artist Kim and Diane. Uh, I don't know what Diane's love. Repetto or something is in there. Hello, hello. And everybody loves our shirts today. So mine's got stars on it. I like shirts with stars. Ron just always looks handsome and be beautiful. No, I cut my hair. It looks like shit. He doesn't like his hair. Do you guys like his hair? I think it looks fabulous. Oh, B. Claudia just joined us too. Hey, B. You in, in, in Germany. How you doing? I look like I had brain surgery and my head swelled up. There you go. And see, I wore a different watch today. What do you got on yours? Mine's a plastic Gucci watch. <laughs> oh, how, <laughs> how, how, how crappy is Gucci? I mean, how I yucky. love Gucci. How yucky, yucky. It's from, from the good old days. You know, I once wore Gucci in 1973. I had a, only because I was at Gucci with a friend of mine and I fell in love with it. It was a safari suit khaki pants with the khaki short sleeve jacket and it had epaulets on each shoulder and they were the color of Gucci. So I thought, you know, not too many people are going to get the colors and put it together because it could be the Italian flag. And I wore that thing to death and every time I wore it, they'd say, oh, you're wearing Gucci, show off Gucci. So I ripped the friggin' epaulets ap off. So we also, also uh, the chat room is really filling up a lot. Why not? I'm on. They come to see me, not you. You. There you go. Person. So B's on there. Addison Wright is there. I don't know if it's actually Addison or if it's Lorene, but if it's Addison, hello. And I think because Lorene's coming in too, uh, so she might be on his account. And um, uh, and Anton, Country Super just joined us, and Anton is from Australia. So what's up, Anton? And uh, they all say you look like a supermodel, and, and so far nobody, everybody says they love your hair. Yeah, right. Even Dave Davis. If I put a thing here and a thing here, I could do Frankenstein. This is how Frankie no. wore his hair. Frankenstein wore his hair like this. He did. They, they made Frankenstein. Oh, yeah, that's true. He kind of did. This is definitely the Frankenstein look. It looks oh, good, though. It's not. Sure anyway, it does. I'm going to go back to my sloppy hair that I chop it up and I let it go wherever it wants to go. This is too like a hairdo. I look like I have a French twist in the back, and I should wear drop earrings and some eyelashes. <laughs> and I look like an old Jew going to a wedding. Love your matching I can say hair Jew, colors. I'm half Jewish. So oh, G. Larry say. Butler just joined us too. What's up, G. Larry Butler? How you what, doing? What is he doing? Huh? What is he doing in my show? <laughs> <Jay coming, laughs> yeah. Into into our show. You get all the work I want. That's he gets funny. all my jobs. He puts himself out there. Yeah, but I I don't put myself out. <laughs> I never put out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Larry puts out. <laughs> Woo! Hi, Larry. Wear a red jacket. I love you in red. There you go, David. Angie, David. baby, congratulations, baby doll, on this of the uh, what the hell am I trying to say? The event, the start of a new company that you have, and I love the name, and I wrote that down that I did love the name because you know I'm a descendant of aliens from Mars, as we all are, and I love that you have alien in your production company. There you go. And also, you guys, Blind came out yesterday. So Forget it. I mean, forget it. If you don't see Blind. It's a great, great movie. Everybody needs to see it. All you guys really go see it. If you don't go see Blind, you know what? You're just stupid. I mean, I hate to call you stupid, but you're stupid because it's such a good time. What a good film. It's really good film, you guys. Everybody in it is it's really good. It's not a horror film where they chop it's up people like the same. Boring shit. Suspenseful horror. It's a thriller. And it's thrilling, and it's suspenseful, and it's spooky, and it's and it's like this. Watch, woo, woo, woo. That's what you do through the whole film. It's a shockerillo. I love it. Sarah French was outstanding. Joe wrote a beautiful script, and of course, Marcel directs like no one else can direct. Absolutely. There you go. That's what I say. Thumbs up. I give it a 10, 12, 15 maybe. Go see Blind. Or you're, or you're just going to miss out on something good. You see other shit on television, junk, horrible garbage. Ugh. Hope everybody had a good Halloween. And uh, I, we watched uh, Boo 2 oh, Halloween uh, on Halloween. Halloween was very boring. Nothing really going on. Nobody 
we were invited to, we were invited to a few parties and we had to renege because uh it was, you know too many people uh, although they were doing the parties out of doors because we're california and our weather is beautiful at night still when you have a hundred people or 75 people your chances of COVID being in being there is is greater than with six people so being uh, my age you know i'm worried about my age being uh, 50 is not easy because 50 year old people get sick now if i were 80 i'd really worry but being 50 i worry a little how big matt you didn't come in on that one that's okay i'm, I'm trying to keep track there's so much going on yeah but you didn't come on come in with a sarcastic remark about my age because you look 50 so i am 50 you look 80. That's okay. I don't care. I'm 50. I married an older Which, man. by the way, you guys, thanks for everybody with all the the, the uh, nice messages about my knee. My knee's doing, you know, better. It's painful and everything. But one good thing about it is that I lost 11 pounds so far because I'm not eating as much junk and candy and ice cream and all that shit because uh, Ron and I are both like eating healthier and taking care of ourselves. I've always eaten healthy. You're the pig that brought the shit into this house. I know. Well, I like I don't junk. Eat junk. I mean, cheese it was there, and I'm starving because we have nothing else in the house for lunch. We have to go food shopping, and I'm desperate, and I needed some carbs. So I was eating cheese it's at the opening of the show because I was, you know, fainting, dizzy. You got to eat, kid, or you have no fuel for the fire. We've been eating a lot of salads and stuff, though, and we have not been eating cookies and cupcakes and all that kind of like stuff. And, mm -hmm. and it really does come off of you because I, I, I can barely walk and, and I'm still losing weight and I'm not exercising because I can't yeah, even because walk. Yeah, because Jimmy has to get back on his knees so we can have a living and make a living. <laughs> Otherwise, we're going to be very poor if he can't get on his knees. Yeah, right. Nix the junk, drink water. Oh, we do drink water. Oh, I drink tons of water. I drink everything. Everything. I mean, we're, I'm, I was always very healthy. I think that's why I'm where I am today at 80 years old, and I'm healthy like I am, God bless, and I jump around and move like a young man. So I don't know what happened to aging. It just didn't hit me, and I hope it never does until I kick the bucket. You know, I just want to, I want to, like, here's how I want to die one day, on stage, jumping in the air, doing a pirouette. And then I drop dead in the air and I fall on the stage dead. And that's a beautiful way to die, flying in the air in a pirouette. <laughs> yeah, no? that's nice. Yeah. At, I just, at 98. I just, want to, I just want to be underneath you looking at you do a pirouette. I don't know what the fuck happened. You don't now. even know what a pirouette is. Yeah, it is. That's like a ballet thing. Yeah, it's a ballet thing. I remember when I was a kid, I always wanted my sister's ballet toe shoes. Hmm. She had this doll and it was this pink. She had a pink crown and a pink suit, and you pushed the button on the crown, and the doll did pirouettes. It was awesome. Did I marry an Eerie Fay or what? <laughs> Eerie Fay is pig Latin for fairy. Mm. That's funny. Boomer says use Epsom salts. I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to take a bath with it yet, but I will use it once I can. G. Larry Butler once says, "Let's go climb a mountain together," and I, to that I say, "Fuck that." <laughs> that. That was a joke I used to do in my show. Uh, when I was impersonating Jane Russell and drag, I said, and the other day, Marilyn Monroe came over to me and she said, Jane, what can I do? Uh, my lips are chapped. So I told her, sit in a bucket of Epsom salts. You get it, Jimmy? Yeah. Oh, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> that joke in 1962 was a very funny joke. It was extremely risque and people were shocked that I would say things like that. Today, if you don't do curse words and dirty stuff, nobody gets it. But back then, if you said just the littlest thing, everybody would go, oh, in the audience. They go, oh, you're naughty, you're naughty. You're, oh, I said, yeah, your ass is naughty. You should hear me in private life. You drop dead. That's hilarious. Though. If you ever heard the way I talk in my private world, every other word. Actually, is you fuck. don't talk that different. No, every other word is fuck. You, every other word. You, Jimmy Starr, in private life, every other word is fuck. I'm not lying. He puts a fuck in between everything. I'm trying to to work on that though, <laughs> but it is true. I do I do drop quite a bit of f bombs in my everyday world. F bombs. Now he's so merry fairy, quite contrary. What f bombs? Fuck. That's what they're called. F bombs. You know, if you know the meaning of the word fuck, f u c k, it's no big deal. Fornication under consent of the king. Yeah, that's all. It's about the king that wants to get laid. I mean, it's no big deal. <laughs> that's right. It's no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody makes such a to-do about it. Ooh, today, everybody's sensitive. You can't say a goddamn thing. I wrote on Facebook the other day, years ago, we had Don Rickles and Joan Rivers. Their humor was hilarious because we made fun of each other and ourselves. 
Today, Don Rickles would be thrown out of a, a nightclub and beaten up because of his humor. Uh, so many other, Dean Martin had that sort of humor. So did Frank Sinatra. Uh, so many people that I've known or met or heard uh, had that sort of humor back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Now humor is stupid. I mean, it's not even funny half of the crap they say. These stand-up comics. The only one who I do love is that black gal. What's her name? I love her. Oh, you like Wanda Sykes. Wanda Sykes is my dream girl. I love Wanda Sykes. Yeah, you guys tweet to her. We'd you like know, to get her on the show. Have, yeah, let's have Wanda on I tried the to show. get her once, and we oh, didn't I'm gonna, get her. I'm going to call that bitch and say, listen, who are at? Get her on the show. She'll, then she'll come. Of course, I talk her language. Wanda Sykes is hilarious. Her voice is wonderful, and her delivery is absolutely perfect. You gotta like love it. Oh, I, I crack up from Wanda Sykes. I absolutely lose it when when she does her crazy stuff. I think uh, but okay. she's the last of the Mohegans, and I don't think she's working too much anymore because I think she's upsetting a lot of people too. So it's all good. So now we're gonna bring in our guest. What do you think? Which one? Sherry Nelson. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, so you can go ahead and like let her in, you guys. Shay. Oh my God. <clears throat> oh Shay. yeah. I was singing, you prick. Okay, go ahead, sing. Sherry, baby. <laughs> Sherry, won't I you come? You wait, wait. Don't interrupt my song or I'll rip that hair out of your head and smack you all over that room. <laughs> and then I'll have to kiss you to death. Now listen. Sherry, baby. Won't you come out tonight? That's the lyric. I've changed it. Sherry, baby. Won't you come to America tonight? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but you had to jump my line, you big mouth broad. What's going on with your show? Hang on, let's introduce her. We Every, gotta introduce everybody her. Knows I know everybody knows her, but we need to introduce her to be prim, prim and proper. Don't forget the first time we had Sherry on our show, like we didn't have video going. So this is the first time people actually can see her and everything on yeah, our but show. Why do you have us look like we are in an airplane? And look where you have the camera. You gotta lower it. Oh. You got you I did that because it was cutting off your hair because it's so high. No, but show cleavage. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so hey so everybody now we want to welcome to the jimmy star show with ron russell the incredibly talented and gorgeous actress model tv host sherry nelson hello and welcome to the show i'm so happy to be here you guys are my american family and ron you're still magic and i apologize for cutting you off that was a wonderful oh, sharing <laughs> Hush, hush, <laughs> hush. I'm teasing. So, you know, uh, Ron. Wait a, wait a oh, second. Wait. If she knows where. Let's cut this. Wait, wait. Oh, we got to do the introduction. We have to do, we, I'm Ron Russell. Who are you? No, no, hold on. Are you a drag queen? No, no. Listen, we have a chat room <laughs> literally filled with like a zillion people. All countries are represented. So, just say hi to everybody in the chat room. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Yeah, there you go. No, they all love say you. my piece. Okay. Sherry is gorgeous. Sherry is sweet. But there's <laughs> one thing that people don't know about Sherry. She's got a heart as big as gold. She <laughs> gave me the front end of my car when it was in an accident. She constantly sends beautiful gifts. She sent Jimmy some beautiful things. I mean, she's the most generous. She gave the one that gave me the wristwatch that you light your, your pot, your joint on. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sherry is one, is a one of a kind. And if good gets good, as I believe, Sherry's going to get great because she's great. That's it. No, it's, it's, I, you know, I always, you guys are my bright light and I know you guys had a tough couple of weeks and you've had a couple of hiccups with your car and you know, there's nothing better than hearing someone so excited once you surprise them with something they don't expect. So, you know, it, you know, I know people, I don't know. I don't like to receive. I like to give. And, you know, in America, my goodness, you guys have a lot of assortment of fun things to give. <laughs> so, yeah, well, yeah. No, you giving. know, for Jimmy's birthday, there was that deli place and they were closed and he was such a good boy. He goes, we'll stay open. And they sent you that birthday meat platter for you. So, you know, God bless America. Thank you. It was well, awesome. And the know, fruit and the fruit basket you sent for my right, knee surgery was awesome. Fruit. I ate all the fruit. Now, good. it was giving, awesome. Giving is really very good. But getting is better if it's done right. <laughs> He's being a perv now. <laughs> and she, she's so innocent and beautiful. So she you look so gorgeous. Right over her head. I mean, I cannot wait for you to move to our country. I, really, I know. I, really I know. Wait. No, I, I, I want to. My father. I want to cook you the most wonderful dinner and have a dinner party. I hope oh, this virus is gone by then. And have a nice party for you so you could meet some nice people. 
How's the virus in Canada? Like, are, are, are you guys still have to wear masks everywhere like we do? Yeah, yeah. They, they recommend us wearing masks. We're having an uptick. But again, we're in that flu season. So I'm not sure if it's the COVID, the flu season, you know, it's getting colder. And so, but yeah, I just, I, I get nervous when I hear about them saying, oh, the border might not open now until the spring. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh, no, that's terrible. So how cold is it in Canada? Uh, well, since I saw you last, I moved from the interior of British Columbia over to the island. So we're fortunate. Um, I think it's about 60 degrees. So at home, it would probably be about 40. So, okay, um, so it's not, it's 60 nice. is not bad. 60 well, is we're, nice. We're having 66 this week in Palm Springs in the daytime. Yeah. It's yeah. like winter. Winter has come to Palm Springs. Very crazy weather. You know, we had... We had more triple digits this year than ever recorded in the history of Palm Springs. It started in April till October, triple digits. We were dying. Yeah, now it's 120, cold. 125. Now, it, yeah, now it's cold, Nicole. For us, it's cold. 60 degrees but, is cold. 52 at night is freezing for me. We have the heat on. Really? Yeah. But I remember um, you were posting, you were working on your backyard, and I remember you had said, and I'd over and over again, I'd seen that at a certain temperature, COVID can't survive in the heat. So that's why I want to bring my father down to Palm Springs with me. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I just said that. Now they're saying, that, you know, I questioned why are we not eating in a restaurant? And they said, because the virus tends to live better in a very nice condition. But outdoor, <laughs> out of doors, it doesn't survive very well because of the sun. The UV rays destroy it, and it's not a happy outdoor person, the virus. So that's why we do everything out of doors. We hate that, though. I hate sitting outdoors to eat. We went to, well, it's not any great restaurant, but we went to like IHOP the other day. It was terrible. I mean, who wants to eat in the gutter? I mean, they have tables out in the gutter. I mean, the gutter, you know, we're, we're, the gutter. Ugh. We we tried to eat at a Denny's on Saturday, and like the dog, uh, Astro, like walked on the concrete no, no, that, tar. on the tar it's all like on tar and then you pick him up and he gets black stuff all over you no he they... jumped on my beautiful cords my olive green corduroys <laughs> and there and there i had black feet prints of the dog all over my cords then i put him on the chair next to me and the chair was full of his paws so when the waiter came over i said Do you have a different table for us we're being you know stained by the tar on this floor and instead of saying i'm sorry sir you know what he said to me well your dog shouldn't be sitting on our chairs <laughs> So I looked at him and I said, well, you shouldn't be working here. You're very ill-mannered. Now we're leaving. And I, we got up and left. I'm not going to take guff from these little fucking punks. Little pieces of nothing. How dare they speak to a person of my age or without respect? Right away, he had to blame it on the dog. It's a dog's fault. No, fuck you. It's your tar that's coming off on my shoes. I, I mean, you know. Where are you putting people, you greedy son of a bitches, to make a buck? I mean, they, they'll put you in the alley where the garbage pails are and the rats are jumping on your table. They don't care. Huh. Yeah. Well, no, we went, um, there was this donut place nearby, and uh, I went in there to go get a donut, and they go, no, ma'am, get out. There's too many people in here. And I'm like, well, God acts in mysterious ways. Obviously, Cher does not need a donut right now. So. <laughs> I mean, we're having a hell of a time. People are not nice anymore. Everybody's uptight, nervous, uh, yeah. yelly, screamy, bitchy. Uh, and, and some of the, I mean, if even the good restaurants you go to, the waiters are very uptight. Sometimes they're nice and they're friendly, but majority of the time is, I mean, have your order, sir. Like, you know, Aktun, where's Adolf? I want to eat German food. But you know what? I couldn't. I could not wear a mask for eight hours. I don't know how the doctors and nurses have done it all this time, but I realize now I'm claustrophobic. So I, I am too. Well, I know a friend of mine. She couldn't wear her g-string more than eight hours. She got claustrophobic. She couldn't breathe. <laughs> I agree with you, Sherry. I can't do it either. Like I put it on and as soon as I can take it off, I take it off. But there's no way I could actually work. I'm so happy I work, you know, from an office from home um, because if yeah. I had to actually if I had to actually go out and like wear a mask all eight hours a day, I would be like suffocating because yeah, I can't the, stand the, the it. The mask that I really like is the one that Angie Baby gave me. Uh, it's Clown Motel. Uh, all it's, I guess it's a piece of fabric from Clown Motel, and they made a mask out of it. It's the only one I could breathe through. Yeah, it's real thin. It's really nice and thin. And Angie, baby, you're in the chat room, right? You should. Yeah, she's it. there. I and love her. Oh, I love my her. goodness. I, 
I love her more than you. She's my buddy. Actually, say um, hi. Say hi to Angie, and also Lady Lake was saying how much she can't wait to see you on here. So say hi to Lady Lake. Everybody in this. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Lady. Our, hi, yeah, Cindy. There Angie. You go. No, Angie. She's actually I followed Angie the first time on your show. She's oh, yeah, a hard there one you to go. follow. And, and, <laughs> and, yes. Angie is so real. That, that's what's why I love her. When I'm with her, I feel like I'm with somebody I grew up with as a kid you know she's i just yeah. love her i'm comfortable with her she makes me laugh uh she's a sweetheart i wish she would move to california and get the fuck out of colorado colorado's not Did a nice place to live don hinton said oh, say hi to don too don hinton hi, says don. You, sh you shouldn't wear a g-string for more than eight hours anyway ron no no i i i, I didn't wear no i didn't wear the g-string there's no G, there's no g-string big enough to hold the jewels up trust me i, I would need a parachute but anyway, no, I'm talking about, you know, women that wear G-strings because they get camel toe and camel toe can cause an infection. So you shouldn't wear panties that make camel toe for more than eight hours. And that was on Facebook. Somebody wrote well, that. Well, I, I think they get camel toe because they got the wrong size. So they yeah. weren't the size too low. Well, they got the size. Know. And then, no. yeah. You know what it is? Half of these chicks have fake asses now. They had their asses pumped up like a Kardashian. So when they put a pair of uh, bikini panties on, it becomes a G-string. It slides in all the cracks. And that's what makes an infection. And you you get a, a what is it called? A, a, a woman when she gets an infection. Yeah, a urinary tract infection. Yeah, urinary tract <laughs> infection. That's it. So girls, pull your panties out of your, your, your cleavage. Or whatever it's hey, called. Cindy Lady likes like this show covers every topic. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, we should mention no, because too. our shows have been so clean lately. I got complaints. No, we met. Uh, we met actually got actually oh, that's a stupid thing. We actually physically met Sherry um, back in. I guess that was at the very beginning of February, right? The very first yep. beginning, right before COVID hit, and everybody like had to close everything down. She was here. She went with us actually to uh, a movie premiere, which is Harley Wall was Harley Wallen's movie, who's our second guest tonight, and uh, and, and Sue Wong's Oscar. And then she party. went to Sue Wong's Oscar Looking gala. Looking absolutely drop dead better than Elizabeth was, Taylor. She was like one of the most stunning women there. It was so absolutely fabulous. Absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Everybody was looking at her and fainting from her. We had a great time. <laughs> Everybody wants to put her in their movies, and then she had to go back to Canada, and then we got hit with COVID, and now she can't come back. But she will be coming back as soon as the opportunity uh, avails itself, I guess is the best way to say it. You were almost going to play one of my daughters in a movie. Really? I, yeah, you were. I have three daughters. It was Sadie Katz uh, and uh, Sarah. No, Andy Sh Stevenson, I thought. No, that's another movie. Oh No, the movie I'm talking about where I played the good dad to the wicked wife. Uh, my children would have, I, we talked about it. My children would have been Sadie Katz, Sherry Davis, and I put your name in for one uh, of the other daughter because I thought, you know, you could look like me years ago with dark hair, dark eyes, because the other ones are all blonde. I'm not a blonde. <laughs> See, I thought I would have played your wife, not your daughter. No, 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 no. The woman that was playing my wife, who I wanted and they wanted, I forgot her name and I wouldn't use it anyway, is a big star. I mean, she's very famous and she would be a good pull for the movie. The movie is Dave's. Oh, it was Dee Wallace. Wasn't who? it? I think Dee Wallace was going to play. Dee Wallace was going to play. The mom from E.T. Was going to play my wife, Dee Wallace. And she's got a big name in this racket. Uh, Dave has written a script that is so phenomenally fabulous. Uh and I cannot wait for him to get green lighted and funded so we could go ahead and make this film. I read the script. Sadie read it. Everybody that read it said, wow, what a good script. And if he directs it, which he's a pretty good director, Dave. And if he directs it the way he's written it, he custom wrote my script. He said, Ron, I know how you are with your two daughters. And I wrote how you speak about your daughters. I thought, wow, is that wonderful? I've never had that done. Usually I play a mean killer. Since, since we don't know when it's going to get greenlit either, though, and we don't know when you're going to be able to come no, no, to the country, that, we don't know wait, what's wait, going wait, on with it. finish with Dave. The minute Dave puts it out there, I intend to work my ass off to get him funded. I am going to pull every string I know. Uh, I'm, I'm even going to make out with Joseph Kelly just to get him to help me to get the <laughs> yeah. money. I can suffer. I can make out with Joe Kelly. I will be, I'll vomit, but I'll try. I'll, I'll tongue kiss him if I have to. Oh, wait. Know. 
Goddess has joined us. Goddess. And so has darling. Dave Hughes. So, Dave, you didn't get to see the fabulous Sherry Nelson the last time she was on because we didn't have video going at that time. We had some technical problems. Um, so, check out. He's our local resident perv. He loves all the beautiful women. So, Sherry. And, uh, Sherry. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Say no, hi to that, Dave. That, that, no, that doesn't work. <laughs> pervert. That perverts don't go for waves. Pucker up your lips, come close to the camera, and smack him with a kiss. <laughs> and there you go, Dave. There okay. you go, Dave. Go now you can go to bed, Dave. You came. <laughs> yeah. So you guys it's over, Dave. Oh, that's you, good. Look how beautiful. Yeah, look how you don't like dirty talk, huh? <laughs> She's not, she's so innocent. I know I can't stand it. No. What, are you, what are you gonna do when you come to LA and you meet all of us filthy mouthed people? Everybody's dirty on she already met us. I not, love it. Not on a There's set. There's no other way to be. It's the best you way gotta, to be. You gotta hear us. You gotta hear us on a set. Dave says he's in lust again. Dave is in lust. <laughs> Dave No, he said lust. I know, but Dave only wanted uh Sadie Katz. He's got a thing for Sadie Katz. Then I think uh, everybody's got a thing for Sadie Katz. My wait, goodness. Wait, yeah, so does Ron. Then, then, then it, no, I love Sadie like my child. I'll never say that. I don't like any of these kids sexually. For someone gay, where I give a shit. But I mean, <laughs> no, no, no. I love them. They're like my daughters. I, yes, I'm, that's true. I love my Sadie Katz beyond belief. I love my Lorene Landon. I love my Sherry Davis. I love my Angie. Uh, oh, she met Lorene at the uh, at the yeah. event too, right? Yeah, she met Lorene. Oh my goodness, that's and, a goddess. And, and my, yes. my my newest love is Angie Stevenson. I adore her. She's fabulous. I don't I, think I, you met her. And if I've left out any names, please, it's because I forgot. But I, I just love my Hollywood friends. No, we love Felissa Rose oh, I love and Felissa. Sherry Davis. And I said you Sherry. met Sherry Davis because she was at the yeah. Oscar Gala with us. Sherry Davis is the flat-chested one. That has yeah, no, right. No boobs <laughs> at all. Yeah, no, no. It's hard to stand next to Sherry. She's, she's pretty <laughs> phenomenal. Actually, I got a note from her. She goes, Sherry, I want to come move to your house. So I said, come on. I know. You, know, you know, she was looking for a roommate. You'd have been a perfect roommate for her. Yeah. And she's got a nice place here also. You really should contact her and say, listen, kick the other one out when I come to the country and I'll move in. That's Hollywood. <laughs> That's Hollywood style. You know, we stab somebody to get their part. Well, kick her out to get you. The room. <laughs> and no, that living with Sherry is a delight because she's the sweetest thing in the world. The people in the chat room actually know who you know and who you don't. They're all like, oh, we know who she met at the Oscar gala. We saw the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> we know she knows because she knows tons of people. And you guys now, Sherry. Uh, besides doing all the wonderful things she does, she's a co-host with Brian Sebastian on Movie Reviews and More. It's a great show. Um, Brian Sebastian is a great guy. He yeah, interviews... when you see him, say hi from me. Uh, of he... course. Actually, you guys still hold the record for the most views. You guys are still at the top. You and Eileen Shapiro are neck and neck for the most views on the show. So you mean, There you go. You mean Eileen Tits Shapiro? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're going to have to come back on because Brian is a cool yes. guy. I liked his show a lot. I, it was comfortable. No, he's a cool guy. And now that you're yeah. there, we can come on and give you a rating. You know, boost it. You boost yeah. It. So listen, um, I, I don't know. I got to ref I got to phrase this properly. If you could come, how soon would you do it? Uh, an hour to ago. To United I'd come United. right away. Okay. Okay. Good. <laughs> Dave likes that, that you come fast. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. That's Sherry, true. I love you. I'm going to kill Look you. at Dave Hughes is like laughing his ass off in the <laughs> chat room, too. Uh, Sherry, Sherry, you are absolutely divine. So, wait, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's do some little promo for her and Brian. Yes, promo her to death. Um, okay, so first of all, you guys, Brian Sebastian, he interviews all kinds of people. If you uh, follow him on Facebook, I mean, he's got like. Simon Callen, like huge people. He also does a lot of great up and coming people, a lot of like physical fitness people, which I guess you're, you're kind of like one of the physical fitness people, right? Cause you're in great shape. Well, um, Terry Marie, my co-host, she's the fitness icon, but yeah, no, we've done, we try to do things where people can gain, you know, you know, enlighten themselves on, you know, this COVID lockdown. Well, how can people get back into getting healthy? Um, but we have like you similar, um, we've had some great entertainers on, uh, my most recent one was Kenny Aronoff and that was a, it was so fun. You know, it was a part one and part two and he's the, the funnest guy and, so no, it's a lot of it's it's a delightful show, you know. Like right now, you turn the news on, or you know, COVID is just simply a negative. So it's I hope it's something people uh, watch as a statement, like your show. We're not number one out there like you guys are, but um, hopefully we'll get there. We, we've joined Dean Piper on his um, platform yeah. with you, 
So hopefully we'll get more people watching us and, and hopefully they like it. Oh, but don't, but don't it. forget the reason why we are number one is because we're on 15 years. And when you're on a show 15 years every week, two guests a week, how many is that a month? Two, four, six, eight a month. <laughs> you know, you've got something going for you. Yeah, we've got a lot of so guests. So I believe, as I'm going to pass this on to you about show business, I believe if you stay in show business for as long as you can, you will become something. Too many people drop out too soon. My mistake. I, I dropped out to raise two kids. I was doing TV. I was doing a lot of good stuff. And I said, no way. My kids are more important than a stupid career. So I went back to hairdressing to make money because in my business, you don't, you know, making movies, you make shit. I don't get the salaries that George Clooney gets. Um, so I went back to work and I gave my career up. Uh, I don't blame it because my kids are good. I raise them well. Mm -hmm. Fabulous girls. I don't have dope addicts or sluts or anything. I have nice, you know, clean cut people coming from filthy mouth me. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so you know, if you if you stay there long enough, they will see you, and they will do something for you. Well, but one of the greatest um, pieces of advice I ever got was from you when you said, you know, when you're talking to people, model yourself after the great Arlene Dahl. You know, and I watched her and watched her, and it was never a chore. She's just class, and you know, uh, she just emanates grace. And I really appreciate that you said that because you know, I, I do try to hopefully not disrespect Jimmy, Eileen, you, you know, because I'm affiliated with you. So I do want to try and you know be something of of good. <laughs> so you're not like, oh Jesus. <laughs> Oh, no, you're uh, fabulous. Arlene Dahl in person is mesmerizing. Oh, I uh, bet. You know, she's an old broad like me, older than me. She's about 88, 89 now. She's got maybe eight years, nine years on me. She's still stunningly gorgeous with the most beautiful <laughs> milk white skin and the up absolute lady. There's nothing. The, her diction is perfect. Her style mm -hmm. is perfect. Uh, she's from the up uh, from the ancient days when everybody was like that. Uh, yes, it, uh, she's what if I were an actress, I would be her because we need more of that. We have too much of the other. Yeah. What, no, what is the other like the whores? No, the other are the, the sleazy sluts with the mini dresses, the clip covers, I call them. And they got their knockers hanging out and they got a, a joint in their mouth and they got a tattoo and they're saying, all right, over here, baby. What are you talking about? Those kind of women. We need to have some stylish Grace Kelly's Audrey Hepburn's again. We need to have style and class brought back to film. It can't always be an alleyway with a chick getting giving a blowjob to somebody. I mean, it can't be that anymore. Let's get away from that sort of crap. Let's go back to my fair lady thinking and uh, just a beautiful. Actually, like 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 you, like you, like you're so classy and beautiful and elegant. And and when you <laughs> went to the Oscar Gala, you look so fabulous. We had met at another red carpet event. Um, Adrian Wilkinson. Oh, totally. Was like you was like Audrey, the most classiest, like Audrey Hepburn type she, girl. She looks like Audrey. She acts like Audrey, and she works her ass off. And she doesn't work in two dollar films either. She's the classiest broad. I adore her. She dresses elegantly. She has. She's flat chested. She doesn't have fake boobs. Nothing about her is today. She's totally nineteen fifty, and and that's why she's getting work. Uh, writers have got to stop writing. Uh, Movies where women are called bitches or women are degraded into being just bosoms. Uh, women have got to go back to being women, stylish women. Men have got to learn that a woman has a brain. And if a woman uses her brain correctly, she's fascinating. Like Sue Wong, my dearest friend in the world, who's you Oscar we went to. Sue and I have become tremendously close friends. I adore her brain. I adore her knowledge. I adore her everything. Women her got, life story is amazing. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm interviewing her as soon as we can. We're working on dates. It's hard. And I'm going to talk about her life story, about how she ate rats as a child. And today is worth about $250 million. You know, how she built that empire. She's a genius of a woman. Yeah. But style and class and dresses magnificently, jewelry, beautiful. We need more of that. Too much of what we see every day is who we are. 
Years ago, we went to the movies to escape. So we would see Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers dancing, and we thrilled from that because we couldn't dance. Today, everything we see on film is what we do or what we shouldn't do or what we want to do. Uh, and it's not, it's negative. I am, I am for better films, better acting. So I'm hoping that you can do the Arlene Dahl thing and become the lady of film. You don't need to be trashed. In no, film. no, exactly. And like you said, with this COVID, your show is getting away from the toxicity of life. You know, it's fun. It's Jimmy's laugh alone is a draw. <laughs> but, you know, like Brian Sebastian, he's ingenious. He's got eight of us, you know, and depends on who the guest is. You know, we're there. And, you know, like I said, Jessica Heim that, you know, um, she's an amazing singer. So he each girl seems to bring something to give momentum to the guest of the show, like you said, is and, and it's class. It's nice. It's it's something positive that you don't think, oh God, I'll never get those 20 minutes back. <laughs> well, well the, the other one that I'm I adore is who I know well is Tippy Hedron, who's a friend of mine. And oh. Tippy Tippy, and that on film, this is lunch with Tippy, you know, having a couple of wines with her. She's a ultimate lady. Tippy is just so gracious and so beautifully spoken. Um, that's another lady that somebody should follow to be. We need to have beautiful, elegant women represented in film. Enough with the boobs and the bullshit and the vulgarity and the chopping and the killing and the blooding and the screaming and the cursing. Let's bring back an affair to remember, Cary Grant, Deborah Wait, Carr. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's why I think Alfred Hitchcock movies are timeless is because, you know, he had those beautiful women in there, Tippi Hedren, Grace Kelly, you know, because, you know, it was something for all audiences. You had the mystery, the allure, the, the tough guy, but then you had that beautiful woman, you know, there and yeah, they always well, resonate. Well, you know, I go to so many functions with Jimmy. We went to a couple of penthouse roof things in Hollywood, very high end, you know, for far, far, far chic. And all the young actresses came with clit cover skirts, tits hanging out, too much makeup, cheesy looking, trashy looking broads. They think they're going to get discovered. No, they get banged. They get banged, but they don't get discovered. The guys that go after them that are important to put them in film don't. They just use them as sex objects. A woman that goes there is sophisticated. Who was that broad that was at that one affair that was stunningly beautiful in the black, long, black and white gown? Remember, she's a big star, too. She's in something. I forgot who she is. Stunning looking woman. I had to go over to her and I said to her, you are absolutely stunning, chic and fabulous. She said, oh, thank you. I wasn't sure. You know, I just had my hair cut in my gown. I said, leave it. You're wonderful. That was at one of Harley's premieres. Yeah, Harley's premiere. She wore a black, black and premieres. white yeah. gown, tall, thin brunette, stunning, stunning woman. I couldn't get my eyes off of her all night long. And the cheesy broads running around in the in the tinfoil dresses, you know, they didn't get anywhere. And they, really, and, nah. they, and they all group together, two or three, like silly bitches, and they're drinking and they're drunk and they're laughing. That's not what the business is about. You're never going to be Marilyn Monroe, so give it up. You know, Mar Mar Marilyn never did that, by the way. Marilyn always dressed sexy, but d with d she was demure. She dressed well. So that's my advice to all of you out there. Get over the thing that you think you're going to be the next sex symbol because you, you, you look like a tramp. And you want to, like, have a career, you need to, like, present yourself in a way that, that looks like you're going to have longevity for a career. Same thing for guys. Don't go out there with beards and weird hair and stuff like that. L go strip like me this way. Not even this hairdo stinks. But, you know, go regular. Let them dress you. Let them make you good for the part. Don't you go there as a character because you may not get the job. It's not what they're looking for. But if you are a clean slate, let them design you. Well, right? in honor of the great Sean Connery, look at him. There's nothing greater than a man in a tuxedo. And I remember the night that I met you and I didn't know that you were with Jimmy. And for anyone out there that sees Ron Russell in a tuxedo, the tuxedo was made for you. You know, you, so Johnny, um, Jimmy, it's it's just class, you know, like I know yeah. we all like the tough, rough guy, but a man in a suit. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but that, that tuxedo, when I opened the shirt and my strapless bustier was showing, wasn't so attractive. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love wearing a tux. I think, uh, you, there's, you know, 
wearing a tux is a style to wearing a tux. There's a way to wear a tux, and it's in the attitude. If you wear a tux, tux incorrectly, you look like a waiter or a maitre d'. But if you wear a tux with authority and you own the suit, it shows in in, in how you're you right look. though, Sherry. He's gorgeous in a tux. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> Sean Connery, you know, was a, an empty blank, and they made him James Bond. He wasn't James Bond in his real life. He was a regular guy, you know, nobody big. I've seen early movies of him before James Bond. He did nothing great, but the minute they dolled him up and made him um Bond, my name is Bond, James Bond, James Bond. That was it. He was overnight. Yeah. It's gonna happen with you. Be the lady you are. Yeah, I agree. Are. I agree. I think so. I 100%. So, so let me ask you a question. First of all, we interviewed Kerry, Kenny Aronoff too, and we had a blast. I think Kenny Aronoff is fucking a list tops. Yeah, uh, book. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay. Uh, oh, look at he's She's got Eileen's book behind her too. I know. I got my wall of fame behind me. Of our oh, there you go. There's yeah. Eileen's book. I've got your, um, I've got your comic book up there too. Yeah, <laughs> Eileen's book is such trash you have to buy it. Gotta love it. I love it. You'll, you'll find out who balls who, who's got a big one, who doesn't. I mean, she's outrageous in her writing. She's buy, her, buy her book. It's a trip in the night. You guys, it's called Waiting for Adam. So who are some of the favorite people that you've had an opportunity to interview and who are some people that you think it would be a lot of fun to interview that you haven't had a chance to interview yet? Oh gosh, I I like everybody. Everyone's been fun. We had Ira Davis on. He's that man that um, toured with the Beatles when they arrived in America in 1963, and he was a Western correspondent for the London Times. And uh, he was also um, at the Charles Manson trial, so he created the template for Vincent Bugliasi. So he was he was good. I I love it when you know they come on. You do your treasure hunt about the individual, and you know you get little fun pieces like Mickey Burns was on, and you know he was ignited as a doctor from his alma mater. So that was fun. But I've always said I always want to interview Gene Simmons. You know, he's the rock and roll legend. He's a smart businessman, you know, and he's just someone I know would be memorable. And I think he'd tap into a lot of um, various demographics in the audience. So I think he'd be a good I one know. to interview. Well, contact him or somebody that knows him. Get a number. Call him. Jimmy yells at me. I said years ago. Every movie star that I ever had, and I had books, I mean, Lauren Bacall, Betty Davis, those are names. You know, Cliff wow. Robertson, hello, Tab Hunter, those are names. I never got them through their managers. I either got them through their publishers if they were pushing a book or through friends that had their private number. Well, Gene uh, Simmons' house is for sale, so I should book an appointment when I come down there to go tour it. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with you. No, really, no, really. It, he won't. He won't listen to you at that because then your audience, you're not in the business. You got to get him on a business level. You have to say, "Hi, this is Sherry uh, Nelson. I have a talk show, and I would love to have you on." I think you know, blah 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 blah. Spit, do your own pitching. That's how we yeah. got Richard Rico. Ron did it in the bathroom while they were peeing together. We were peeing next to <laughs> each other. That was a good one. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, Richard, why don't you come on our show? And he looked at me like I was crazy. And I said, yeah. And I told him all about the show. And we were just standing there, dick naked, you know, talking about going on. And of course, we didn't look at each other because he's not gay. And I don't do that. But anyway, it, we just bonded right there. And that's how he came on the show. And now we become friends. We did another show that him. he was on. Love him. Love him. Did, yeah, he's a great guy. But love him. So I'm a huge Kiss fan. Actually, I have I have the all four. Uh, they're like two feet tall statues of the Kiss ones that's standing on ro rocks. And you push a button and each one plays a different song. And I've actually met Peter, Chris, and Ace oh, Frehley. I met Peter, Chris, and Ace Frehley um, uh, actually at a convention that I was at one time, and they were like the guests. But I've never met Gene Simmons, and I've never met Paul Stanley, and they're like the two biggest stars of KISS. And, yeah. But I used to love watching that Gene Simmons show about, with him and his family uh, and stuff on TV because he's such an icon, and they were like one of the most successful bands in history. And to get him on a show would be super couth. I mean, that would just be like a total like – a total, a total win. Um, so well, yeah, because I remember in Maxim, they asked us that question. They said, if you could be, if you're on a long flight, who would you want to sit with you? And I said him, because my goodness, there's a lot of area to cover. Like, you know, the, the conversation can go anywhere. So yeah, he'd, he'd be a definite part one, two and three for sure for the show. <laughs> I want so desperately to get Sophia Loren on our show because Sophia's made oh, a movie. She's coming back. And I made a movie with her. It would 19. be a reunion for you. 
Yeah, it would be. I, I thought you, Jimmy, wouldn't that be wonderful? I started my career with Sophia and I could end it with Korea, my career with Sophia. Uh, but there's no way to get a contact on her because she lives in Paris, I think. Uh, I don't think she even lives in Italy. I think she's living in Paris. But I, when she does a tour of that film, if she's going to do any PR on it, we're going to grab her. And I'm hoping so to get Sophia Loren on this show because she's quite a, a woman. She's also one that tells it like it is. She's a sweetheart. I mean, I was. she was 26. I was 19 when we met. And she was as kind as anyone could be. And so sweet to me. I, and, try, I tried to get a... Uh... Raquel Welch, but no, I don't like. They Raquel looked at Welch. our show and they said, "Absolutely not." <laughs> no, no, I don't. I don't like Raquel Welch. You should have asked me because I would have walked off. Raquel Welch is the nastiest bitch I have ever met. I don't like her. She's arrogant. She's nasty, and she thinks who she is, and she looks down at everybody. She is a horror on wheels. No one wants to work See, with Raquel, her. See, Raquel, we don't want you anyway. <laughs> no, I'm glad you didn't have her on because I wouldn't have been so nice. And how dare she snub our show? Where did you, who, how many people have you slept with in Hollywood to get where you are, Raquel? <laughs> I slept with nobody to get where I am. I worked. Oh, my gosh. Boomer loves you. Boomer's like, Jesus Christ, Ron. That's hilarious. <laughs> but it's true. It's true. How many men has she slept with to get a role in a movie? I've slept with nobody except, you know, Joseph Kelly. He keeps asking me, but I turn him down. Yeah. <laughs> Who's Boomer in the room? Is oh, Boomer Mays. So oh, Boomer I Mays. Know Boomer. Yeah, I he's, on, he's on Twitter and he's a, a free he's agent great. in the NFL. Football. Great guy. Yes, football, yeah. big football player. No, I know him. He's great. Yeah, he, he's like super fun. So, okay. So, Eddie Gene Davis, by the way, hated her. So, okay. So, so Gene Simmons is your male. What about if you could interview a female? Do you have a female that you think would be fun to interview? Angela Bassett. I just love her. You know, oh, she wow. plays She's so good. strong. Yeah. Yeah. No one like who? Angela Bassett. Angela She's the one who played Tina Turner, right? In the Tina Turner story. Yep. Yeah. She's a great actress. Fine. Great oh, actress. She's strong. I love her. Yeah. I'd like to interview her. Dave Hughes says he slept with so many women and he ruined all their careers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he gave them all you know, chlamydia. Uh, yes, <laughs> disease. <laughs> he gave them all the clap. <laughs> That's freaking hilarious. Okay. Yeah, well, Ron, we, who would you want to interview? Who's your yeah. goal? Oh, I said Sophia Loren. I want Molly Ringwald, and, and he and, thinks that's a, like funny because like she's not that big a deal. But Molly no, Ringwald is like my favorite. No, she, that, to me, she never worked for me. As a man, the male I would like to interview would be uh, probably George Clooney, because yeah? George, George is another guy that tells it like it is. He's down to earth. I know many stories about George because we share a mutual friend, and I won't go into the stories; they're personal. But the stories that I'm told about George, he is absolutely a riot. He's hysterical. One story I can't part with. Um, a friend of George's came from New York to LA and he stayed with George and he brought his cat and the cat wouldn't make duty. So, the, well, I didn't want to say take a shit, okay? I want to be <laughs> to so the, the cat wouldn't make duty. So George knew about this. The next morning, George made a poop in the kitty litter box. And when the guy came back, he said, oh, my God, my dog made a poop. My you cat. Gotta, my cat. You got to see the size of it. <laughs> and that's a true story. George has a humor like that. He's funny. He's a funny guy. My other one would be Charlize Theron. I would love oh, Charlize yeah. Theron. She's now that's probably a class my number act. one. That's a class act. Charlize is class. She's yeah. sexy. She's sexy in, in a way of... Uh, not like uh, not not like a ten buck broad. She's a class act. That Charlize is magnificently beautiful. I would love to have her on the show. So hold on, you guys. I want to do a, a quick ad, real quick, while we have Sherry Nelson on the phone because she's participating in this event, and you and I are participating. Oh yes. By in the way, event. I want to say the cheese its box I had on the beginning of the show. We are not their sponsor. I mean, they are not our sponsor. So you guys, listen up, everybody. So on November twenty fourth. Um, Soho Johnny is is presenting Let Me Help Inc. Celebrity Benefit Concert. It's from 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, I believe that's on a Tuesday. And you're going to go to iConnect, I, iConcert.tv and go to the website, and there's going to be a six-hour concert raising money to benefit people who have been um, uh, 
either bullied or have cancer or who have had bad things happen because of COVID-19. So it's a benefit concert to raise money. Here's just a few of the people that are going to be involved uh, in this event, including Sherry Nelson. And Ron and I are going to be in the event. We have um, many of these people you guys will know because they've been guests on our show. Ian Guerin, Kim Sledge from uh, Sister Sledge, Andrew Cole, who is the founder of the I'm No Joke anti-bullying campaign, uh, Kenny Olson from Kid Rock's Twisted Brown Tucker Brand, Kenny Aronoff, uh, Leon. I love Leon. We love Leon. Rocky Kramer, Rick Wakeman, Fred Schneider from the B-52s, Scott Page, Sadie Katz, Lorene Landon, Martha Davis from the Motels, Susie Quattro, 10 years after. Uh, Lady Lake Music has some of her artists that are going to be performing. Um, David Martinez, Thomas Claxton, Lori Diamond and Fred Abatelli, um, Ozzy and Sharon Osborne, Sir Patrick Stewart, Cedric the Entertainer, Jeff Goldblum, Jane Lynch, um, Julian Lennon, Verdine White from Earth, Wind & Fire, Kenny Lee Lewis from uh, Steve Miller Band, and um, there's a whole bunch more. That's just some of them that I wanted to like make sure that we like brought people in on, and we would love it if everybody would tune in and participate and watch it. Uh, iconcert.tv, 1124, 7 p.m. to 1 a.m., and the website for the charity is letmehelpinc.org. And it's going to be a lot of fun. You're excited, right, Sherry? Oh, it's going to be the best, and it's for a good cause, and it's it's going to be a night of energy, entertainment, glamour, you know, and, and my goodness, we can't really watch sports like we used to, so this is going to be our big event. It's going to be, you know, the rock concert of the year, and, you know, and no one puts a better show on than Johnny. and. Uh, of course, Eileen's involved, and she's doing lots. And No, I think it's going to be a fun night. So hopefully you'll welcome us into your home, and you'll enjoy it as much as we will. Yeah, I heard Eileen Shapiro was going to do a strip tease. <laughs> yeah. Well, then there's definitely why no, you need no, to no, step then, in. Then, no, then she called me up, and she said, no, Ron, I'm not doing a strip, so why don't you do it? So I'm doing it. There you go. Not a pretty sight, but I'm doing it. <laughs> Actually, he does strip teases really good. He is a good one. <laughs> In drag, when I did, he's change, like good at them. I'm a very good dancer, as far as an old-fashioned um, Minsky's burlesque stripper. I do the real old-fashioned da 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 da, you know. But he not can shake a, his not, hips really good. Yeah, but not as a guy. I did it as a as, as a woman, as impersonating a woman because I'm an actor, not a drag queen. An actor. <laughs> Also, you guys, you can follow Sherry Nelson in her social media um, on Twitter and Instagram. She's XO, 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 Sherry XO. That's right, right? XO, XO, Sherry XO. <laughs> Did not know I'd be promoting that when I created it. <laughs> XO, XO, Sherry XO. So follow her, and you guys want to like uh, subscribe to movie reviews and more on YouTube with her. Uh, actually, the host is Brian Sebastian, and she's the co host. It's a great one. Um, yeah, I want to answer a question. How'd you get this gig? Um, actually, uh, Brian was looking for some lumber <laughs> and, you know, I used to sell lumber. So then he, we were talking about lumber and Trixie Gwynn, one of the co-hosts, she said, we got to get Sherry on as a co-host. And so they invited me on one day and I've been there ever since. <laughs> so what is good. So it was wood that brought you together. I always said a woody can make anybody. That's happy. right. Wood is good. A Isn't that funny A, a woody is better. You guys look at how look at her like how gorgeous she is that she used to like sell, sell lumber for God's sake and now she's like t going from she's, selling lumber to the glamorous world of Hollywood. No, she used to sell lumber now she gives woodies. <laughs> <laughs> they said they're in the lady like they're like yes when you look at Sherry you immediately think of lumber salesman right. <laughs> uh, no guys look at her they think of Woody that's for sure. Dave sure is. Dave Fuse is definitely thinking of Woody. Thanks, oh my Dave. Gosh. Oh, Boomer, Boomer, Boomer Mays just followed you too. Like she says she's following you on on uh, on social media. So you guys, her Instagram is awesome. She gets tons of likes on everything. Her Twitter, we need to build up. So follow her on Twitter. And um, um, so who do you got big and exciting coming up on the show soon that you're going to interview? Oh my goodness. Um. I'm not exactly sure. We haven't. Uh, Brian's been doing a transition over to Dean Piper's network now, so we'll be on streaming like you. So, um, I'm. I, Cindy's coming on. Lady Lake Entertainment. She's coming on. I'm excited about that. Yay, Cindy. Um, Cindy. Yeah, Rick Cheddar. Cindy he's going to be coming on, and uh, you know, hopefully, we'll get a lot of them back. You know, like Kenny Olson, Kenny Aronoff again. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll get all those guys back. How again. was your? How was your? You did an interview with Michael Debar, right? 
No, something came up at the last moment. I did interview him on the Freaking Awesome podcast a few months ago. Um, and he was scheduled for our show, but something came up. So we're hoping to reschedule that one again. Okay. But he's another, he's an amazing interview. Uh, that how, how, come, yes. how come Kathy Sledge is not going to be in jo Soho's show? Um, her well, sister is. Yeah, we haven't gotten a, a verification from her yet. Oh, and Cece Peniston's going to be in it too, you guys. I just got a text uh, from her. Oh, my so God. So she's going to be a party love, participating too. I love my Cece Peniston. But look, Kathy, I love her too. Why isn't Kathy on our show? I don't know. Because she's busy doing stuff, I guess. I have to call her and tell her. We'll get her. And I want her to bring Patty LaBelle with her. <laughs> oh, he wants Patty LaBelle. That's like one of his biggies too, is Patty LaBelle. Pa yeah, Patty LaBelle. I'd love dying to interview her because she's a woman that has done so much for so many people and never talks about it. Uh, nobody knows the real Patty LaBelle. They only think she's a singer, but not true. Patty LaBelle. You know what? She makes an amazing pumpkin pie, I think, or sweet potato pie. No, Apparently, no, no, it sells no, no. out every Thanksgiving. No, her blue cobbler is the one. Her uh, blueberry. Oh, is it? Oh, it weighs. They're six, all good. It weighs six pounds. Ah. But is it delicious? The blueberry pie cobbler, I think it's called crumb cake. I don't know crumb cobbler, whatever it's called. So when everyone's watching the show, they got to get her pie. And yes. Enjoy her, that. Yeah. <laughs> her, her pies are fabulous. Okay, they're, they're her grandmother's recipes. You know. Did you know that? No, they're, they're over a hundred years old. Those recipes, really? That's yeah, what, that's what they ate down south. I mean, I guess they were slaves, but that's what slaves ate. So it's slave food, which is interesting. Absolutely, it's fabulous. Okay, so let's talk movies. First of all, do you have a favorite movie? Tequila Sunrise. I love that movie. Oh my! Who's in that? Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson, Michelle Pfeiffer, uh, Kurt Russell. Uh, I, I Raul love Julia. Michelle. I love Raul Julia. I love Michelle Pfeiffer. She's like one yes. of my more favorite. Actresses. She's an interview. Yeah. Yeah. She would be a fun one to interview. Kurt, Kurt Russell's nice. I met him and his wife, Goldie Horn. They and, live here and, sometimes. And they live in Palm Springs. I met them in Barnes and Noble. And we Did, there's um, there's a really good movie out about his father. Um, He created the minor league for the baseball in Oregon. And it's on Netflix, and it's amazing. It's the best. Kurt Russell's in it. It's not a movie. It's a documentary of actual video and clips from the, um, I think it was in the 70s, uh, that he took over the baseball. And it was, you know, it was the a motley crew of players that were rejected by the major leagues, and they were just the most popular team. And it, you got to watch it. It's great. Well, they're a very nice couple. They're very easy to see in Palm Springs. They're all over. They live not. Right across the road, we there's um Palm Canyon Drive. They live on the other side of Palm Canyon Drive, walking distance from our house. And well, she's sweet as anything. She's very nice, Goldie. She's smiley and happy. And Kurt, I love her too. Actually, and Kurt is you know kind of serious, nice. They had just come back from skiing in Aspen when we were chatting. Lovely people. I like that Goldie Hawn movie where all the wives go after the husbands who are cheating on them. What's that movie called? First, First Wife Club. Club. First, First I love Wives that movie. Club. Yeah. Do you ever see Suzanne Summers? Uh, she lives here. We've, I've never no. seen her. I, I saw her, not now. I saw her about eight, 15 years ago. Uh, yeah, it was about 50 when I lived here before, at, when I lived in Mountain Gate, and she was in town walking with another friend. And she was all right, you know. I mean, I didn't jump her or talk to her. I just looked at her and smiled and said, Hi, Susan. And she looked at me. She said, Hi. And I kept walking. <laughs> You know. A lot of famous people have houses here. They're um, all over the place. So there's a lot of them. So you see a lot of them all over I mean, the place. I, I see so many movie stars here that I know or I knew. The old, the old, I mean, uh, and all the soap you know, Barbara stars. Barbara Sinatra's dead and I knew her. Uh, you got Judith Chapman comes to your home and I love her. Well, uh, yeah, Judy is a doll. We love her. Oh, too. Uh, we have all the soapies. Bobby oh, yeah. Eakes who I'm now moved to Georgia. Judith Chapman, Tristan Rogers, Sean Kanan. Um, they're all off. Yeah, they're all. They all come here. They're we, fun. We we hang uh, together, but there's more than that. There's you know a lot there's, of movie stars here. I can't think of one now. I know now that we're trying to think of them. I can't amazing? think of I mean, them. Either. I see them in town. I see them in the supermarket. I see. Hello. How oh, are John Barrowman lives here. Yeah, we see really? him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, we, wow. See, we see him all the time. We run into him in the parking lots. Always at the grocery store, we oh, see him. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, Palm Springs is a very small town. Actually, John Behrman was on our show, and he's our still our uh, in thirteen years. He's still our number one show. It got ten million plays. 
Oh, um, that's right. For one, for one show. People yeah, like, loved him. Ruta Lee lives here. Ruta's not far from us. If anybody knows who Ruta Lee is, um, just, I can't, why can't I think of all the movie stars that are here? How about um, my good friend Garrick Lee, you guys? I, I like him. I miss him, Garrick. Oh, yeah, Garrick's here. Uh, Garrick is good. Garrick is, yeah. he's doing his Loretta Christian Sins and Sins and Son show yeah. which i adore i laugh my ass off from that show i think it's crazy and he he does crazy and i love crazy garrick is good we don't see garrick we don't see anybody nobody yeah. everybody here's a friend yeah, nobody goes out so we don't have since I mean, covid we haven't seen anybody i haven't seen or heard from Teresa rogers tristan's wife in months and she's off facebook and she won't go anywhere because she has her mother living with her who's an older woman my age, and her husband, who's 73 years old, Tristan. So she's terrified of bringing the, uh, the, the COVID home. Cindy Lady Lake says she has a huge crush on Sean Kanan. So like next time oh, like Sean, next time he comes over, we'll call you and you can talk to him because I talk Sean, to him all the time. Sean, Sean is an absolutely terrific down-to-earth regular Joe and his wife I'm crazy about. They come to my house. I mean, you know, I was preparing dinner and I was a little backed up. And Michelle came in the kitchen. She said, move over, because she's Italian, too, and cooking with me. And then Sean said, I'll make the salad. And they did. They're regular Joes. They're not phony Hollywood shit. So let me ask I you a question. It. Let me ask you a question, Sherry, though, because we are, we're going to have another guest calling in a minute. So so did you ever think that when you entered that Maxim Modeling Magazine contest that your life would change so drastically? <laughs> not at all. No, I know. Um, I, it's funny because when the contest start again, I usually get a note from some of the contestants wondering what to do. And I said, well, all I wanted was if you Googled me, you might see a nice photo of me online. That's all I hoped for. But, you know, I'm, I'm happy I did it. But everything changed when I met you, Jimmy. So um, you're the man that changes the trajectory of everything. Well, I don't know about that, but I think I know right. about that. No, <laughs> it, it, it's true. Try living with them. He is a controller. He tells me what to do all day and night. Like I'm a senile retarded old man. In my office all day. Work. No, 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 no. When you get up and you come in the kitchen, you start throwing orders at me, Adolf. You know, and I said, listen, you know, we killed you in the second world war. We don't need you again. Yeah. He definitely, but I ignore him because I do what the I want. The chat room loves you. Do you think that my brain is going to be twisted around by this guy? Never happened. Nobody <laughs> was able to. Ron Russell does his thing, says what he wants, and if you don't like it, go away. Change the channel. You have an option. Jane Russell used to say that to me all the time. My loving, sweet, darling Jane Russell. She I say, love her. Oh, uh, I love her more than anybody. Uh, she used to say to me, Ron, if they don't like it, tell them to change the channel. Yeah. Jane. No, Jane Russell and my grandma, I swear they're soul sisters. She, you know, my grandma was kind of like that. I love Jane it. Jane was very outspoken like me. Jane and I were really related somewhere in the world uh, years ago because we were identical in our thinking, our, our likes, our dislikes, our political views. Everything was absolutely the same. Um, she was quite an, an, uh, an intelligent uh, honest, true blue person. I've never met an, an actress of that caliber because she was a super legend in her day. That was as down to earth and she never got screwed up from it. It didn't burn her brain out and make her think she's a star. She was no Norma Desmond, that's for sure. So I, I want to say, because the chat room, like, I think that, you know, meeting you uh, was definitely like a wonderful thing. I think you're a wonderful person. You've got so many great things going on. I also think you've developed a huge, like, fan base. I mean, people in the chat room, all they're writing about is how great you are, and how, <laughs> how, um, how, how nice you are, and how you're real and down to earth and everything. And so uh, I think you're going to go a long way, and I'm, we're very happy that we know you. And uh, um, we think it's, like, freaking, like, wonderful. So um, we want to yeah. thank you. Well, I'm waiting for the day that you're here so we could be together. Knowing you, yes. like, knowing I want to ride in your car. I want to dance oh, with definitely. you. Those are my twos. I, yeah. I do want to do that. But, but Jimmy, definitely. like my father, I don't have fans. They're all my friends. Because my dad, he's so cute. He goes, well, people seem to like you. So maybe lumber's on hold for now. So, <laughs> so yes. thank you for being my friend. Well, Absolutely. thank you for being our fabulous. friend too. But I want more. I want you to be our friend here. Me not too. On, not on Skype. Yes. What, what, are we on Streamyard? Stream? What are we on? Streamyard. Stream Whatever the frig we're on. Stream so you guys follow Sherry Nelson. Uh, Instagram and Twitter is both XOXO Sherry XO. 
Um, we should actually make a fan page for you on Facebook. Do you have a Facebook <laughs> fan page? You should have a fan page. <laughs> Because yeah. everybody can't add you as a friend because you can't have that many friends, and so uh, just because maybe my new friend on there, that man on there, can help me. <laughs> there you go. Yes, Dave. Dave, hi, <laughs> <I> Dave. <laughs> you gotta like love it. So we want to thank you for coming on, everybody. Check out movie reviews and more. Subscribe on YouTube. Watch Sherry with all her cool interviews, and um, she's gonna be doing a whole bunch of stuff oh, once COVID opens up. I know she's just gorgeous. Come and on. I'll see everyone uh, November twenty fourth. Um, I look forward to um, seeing everyone there. It's a great cause, great entertainment. So it'll be a bright light for 2020 at the uh, Soho Johnny Let Me Help Inc. I can't Absolutely. wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait either. It's going to be for a good cause, and it's going to be fun just seeing everybody that we love so much. All right. Anyway. Sherry, thank you, sweetie. Stay, we love you. stay well, stay safe, and stay happy, my sweet. Thank you. Bye. Bye. See you later. Bye, honey. All right, everybody. We want to thank everybody for tuning in. You can listen to W. You can listen to our show weekly. Our home station is W4CY Radio. Uh, we're on from 12 to 2 p.m. Pacific time or 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern time. We're also on K4HD Radio in L.A., Jackalope Radio in St. Louis, iHeart Radio, Stitcher, Audio Boom, Podomatic, SoundCloud, iTunes, Spreaker, Apple TV, Podbean, Spotify, and Pandora. On television, you can see us on uh, Roku, JSW Television on the JimmyStarsWorld.com site. You can also see us on Comcast, uh, Vimeo, um, and it's a lot of fun. So hopefully you guys will tune in and watch us. We want to thank everybody because we had about 20,000 views on uh, – I put three shows up this week on uh, YouTube, and we had about 20,000 views. So thanks, everybody, for watching. Uh, our next guest is going to be coming uh, on in just a minute. And uh, while we're waiting for him, what else do you want to talk about, Superstar? I want to talk about that I always have the sniffles. Okay. And I don't know why. You know, when I lived in Palm Springs 20 years, 15 years ago, I had sniffles. When I moved back to New York, the sniffles were gone. And a friend of mine who is a doctor, a sinus guy, he said because the sand in Palm Springs is so fine, it's a dust, you are breathing it constantly. And swallowing it while eating. And I thought, wow, I got the Sierra Desert in my stomach or the Mojave Desert. And now I'm having the same problem again. The, the fine dusty sand, I don't want to be gross, but you know, in New York, you get green, wet, slimy snots. Here in California, Palm Springs, you get dry brown rocks. They're like stones. So your snots are different. Wasn't that interesting? Yeah. <laughs> All right. You ready for Harley? Ready for Harley All right, any day, but I'd be much ready for his wife because she's pretty. <laughs> so go ahead, uh, Rebel. You can like let him in. Let's make sure we can hear him and we'll get rocking and rolling. Hey. There he, there he is, the man. Hey, Harley. How you doing? I'm great. Great. How about you? Fantastic. Good. good. Uh, all right, let's do a thing so we can introduce them. And all right, everybody, now we want to welcome to the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell, the incredibly talented, I guess he does everything, writer, actor, producer, director, superstar extraordinaire, Harley Wallen. Hello and welcome to the show. Hey, Jimmy. Hey, Ron. How are you guys? It's been a while. Good. I'm excited to hang out with you guys again. We always have a good time. Oh, Absolutely. The only one thing you didn't say about Harley, what, what Harley, what he does good is makes beautiful children. Yeah, dude, I saw a picture of your two kids today yeah, on, but online. You know what? I said they don't look like Harley; they look like his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Harley's sexy and cute, but his wife is gorgeous. So, yeah. How, how, is, how, is your, how is your beauty? She's such a sweetie pie. She is awesome. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, I don't know what has happened, but uh, I think the last few roles she's had, she's just really blown out of the park, but she's getting so much attention and so many people, uh, whether it's interviews or if it's roles and offers. Uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, but she's been really busy with all kinds of fun stuff. Good she, for her. She's a very good natural actress. Yeah. When you see her work, you don't see an actress working. Mm -hmm. You see the character live. That's yeah. how I would describe her. I love her work. Yeah, she, she worked really so hard natural. at that. Very, very natural. And she put a picture. First of all, everybody, we want to wish, wish Harley a happy birthday. Today yes, is his 19th you. birthday. And uh, he's a... Uh, there you go. It's his birthday. So happy birthday. And, and how old are you, old big? 25. Oh, me too. <laughs> I, thought, I thought we were this right around. Right. I think I, I think I'm three years, three minutes younger than you 
something like that. It's closed. So what have you got to bullshit about today? No, what? Hold on. What? Say, say, hi to, say hi to everybody in the chat room. Oh, yeah, we have chat a chat room full of, like, really full of people. There's a ton oh, of chat wow, room. Awesome. Hello to everyone in the chat room. Feel free to talk it up and uh, and ask questions and and uh, have some fun. But uh, I, I want to talk about uh, Bennett Song Holiday. Uh, we we're just about to have our see up premiere. Uh, we were supposed to be in LA, but obviously with this Corona bug hanging around, um, they decided against a physical premiere. I was hoping maybe we'd go with a drive-in premiere. That didn't happen either. But we're doing something online that the more I learn about it, the cooler I think it is. It's highly interactive. It's a premiere where you can chat with whether it's me or Corbin Burnson or Bryce or anybody who's going to be on for this. Uh, it's going to be a blast. Um, and it's pretty much the the, the 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 same price as it would be to buy uh, to buy the film and watch it on uh, on Amazon or whatever else. Uh, anyways, and you get to watch it two days before. So. Uh, November 8th, Sunday, uh, and that's the premiere. And it's, it's on Sia, which is C-Y-A. Um, and the film is called uh, Bennett's Song Holiday. So Sequel. Yeah, so you ben know what? It's not the same. I miss the red carpets. I miss, I miss the hugging and the seeing you and everybody and chatting. I miss, the I miss the after party. You know, I think it's going to be over. Now that the, the election is going to be over in a day or so, uh, I think that they're going to open everything up and the shot will be ready. We're going to get better. And I think that you should hold that movie off. Maybe do it in, in the spring. Yeah. That's a little too late. I have more, though. There's there's a horror film coming out uh, that actually I think, you know, I'll be honest with you, like uh, every single time I have a, a, a finished product, I look at it critically and say, what is the true uh, uh, where do we top out with this? What's the what's the where 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 does it land? And, uh, and I'm usually pretty realistic. I have no limit for Ash and Bone. It still blows me away how good this is. So I'm, I'm tinkering with this a little bit extra just to make sure that it is as right as possible. Uh, and then the TV series, Tale of Tales. Uh, and, and I got, I, I, I got to say this, I got to get you in for the, when we start up the next season run, uh, you, you're like tailor made for this series. Yeah, he's got a cool playing what? <laughs> I don't know yet, but it takes place at a strip club. I can think of a lot of positions that you can have. Uh, remember, remember one thing. My name goes over the title. I only work from 10 to 4. My dressing room is on the set, <laughs> and I get 1400 a day. Yeah. I'll remember. So hold on, you guys. Let's go back. First of all, so a Bennett song holiday. This is a sequel to Bennett's song then, right? Yeah. Is it a sequel? All right, so I wrote a little like a, a little synopsis down so people get to know because this is a great family film, you guys. Yeah. A Bennett Song holiday. The unique Bennett Song family learns the true meaning of the holidays as they solve a community crisis and adapt to big changes. Everything you want in a holiday film. Love, the power of belief, laughter, tears, and new music classics. And it stars Harley and Kaylee Wallen. Dennis Haskins, you guys, he's like Saved yeah. by the Bell or one of those, right? The principal on Saved yeah. by the Bell. Yeah. Corbin Burnson, who I love. I think he's fabulous. And, yeah. and Calhoun Conan, who's, you know, is in, it seems like she's in all your films and she's a phenomenal young actress. Well, I've got to she say, one, I have to say one thing. I want to burn a lot of asses, but I don't give a shit. About time the script sounds new, fresh, and different. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it could be a good movie. I mean, just by the little bit we heard, right, Jimmy read me. It, it's, yeah. it's not one of those, you know, chop them up one at a time in the, in the dormitory. No, yeah. Um, He's the same. <laughs> yeah, my partner, Nancy Oswine, wrote this. And the first Bennett song uh, did really well. I mean, it's on Fuse TV. It's on Super Channel. So we've gotten it out on TV, but also big sales to China and and uh, uh, some other uh, big foreign sales. Uh, so the film is doing really well. So we don't know if this is going to turn out to be a franchise. Uh, I know right now Nancy's looking to shopping this as a TV series because the films uh, seemingly are doing really well. Hi, Nancy. We should say hi to you. You know met Nancy because yeah. she came to the Oscar Gala with us. She was at oh, the Oscar Gala yeah, and her yeah. daughter. Oh, yeah, Nancy. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Nancy. How you doing, sweetie? Calhoun. I forgot what we talked about. We talked about something. She's fabulous. Mm -hmm. She's yes, really she nice to see her in all social media stuff. Great, so. great writer, too. She has two scripts that she has written uh, that, that we haven't started tackling yet. We have an abundance of scripts, uh, but, but I read through them, and they're amazing. Accidental Gods, it's 
incredible. So anybody who is uh, who's got the capital to jump after something that yeah. that one. Okay, the Harley, movie. Harley, Harley. Yes. How, how do you get funded? Every fucking movie you put up, you're funded. Everybody else is busting their hump to get funded, and you say, "I got a movie," and you got funded. Like, and you put I, out like a five a year. Are, are, are you <laughs> are you laundering Russian money? I wish it was that easy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's hard. Uh, but no, uh, it's all private investors. And I think what happened was with us being pretty fortunate about getting a, a nice buzz on the market and, and getting, uh, you know, I think Betrayed now is in 34 countries. It's crazy. Um, you know, when you start getting checks and stuff, people get really interested in, in coming on board. Uh, so I think that's the thing. And, and when I talk to a lot of other people, um, that's the struggle is, is to figure out a good way to do the business side of things. Uh, and, and I think that's where, you know, some independent films fall apart is, uh, is on the business uh, side Hi. of things. Yes, absolutely. Because I know so many people that have written some pretty good stuff. Yeah. And they're, and they're not getting funded. They're having difficulty. And then they go yeah. on this thing. What is this thing where you beg on television for money? Oh, he didn't like Indiegogo. Indi stuff. Yeah. I, don't, I don't like it either. I don't. Uh, in, the, Jimmy now has got two films coming up of which I cannot speak about. Okay. We're, go we're going to Atlanta. And they're million-dollar films. Mm -hmm. So Jimmy and his people have been able to raise a, a few million bucks. Um and then I have other friends that, that, that can't even raise 150000 Yeah. It's well, sad. right now is tricky times. If you raised a million during this mess, uh, my, my hat's off to you. Because, uh, yeah, right now, even I, who normally don't have a huge problem raising budgets, it's not easy. I have an incredible horror film where we're going to reboot vampires with a Viking origin and uh, – and uh John's in that film, right? I saw it on your IMDb. Jan's in that yeah. film, right? I love yeah. Jan. We got a love. lot of attention. Jan, Sean, uh Maria Olsen, uh, uh uh Deborah Lamb, like a lot of a lot of really cool people are in and on board uh with, with that project. V does in it, and uh and that has so much potential, but I but I'm still stuck. I still got about 30 35 percent of that budget to build. Um, and we're, and we want to shoot that right after Christmas and, uh, or, and New Year's. So that's going to be interesting if we can pre pro enough and, and finish up that budget. Yeah. But Jimmy's films are not being shot until after January. They yeah. will be released the following year. Don't forget yeah. COVID is not going to stay here. They have a vaccine. We all are going to take the vaccine or you're going to be put in prison or something. I heard, I don't know what the hell it is, but you have to take the vaccine. Uh, this COVID bullshit has been very publicized for political reasons and for all sorts of reasons. Okay. You went through my whole household. I had it. Katie had it. Kids had it. Uh, so we've already dealt with the bug. Right. And I think my daughter and I have had it and Jimmy had it last year. Mm. We were very ill. Not I, I was semi ill. Uh, and I don't get ill. I don't get colds or anything. So let's think ahead. Let's say if you have a film now and the script is good, promote it. Get your two or three million because you're not going to yeah. put it out until next year. And next year, the theaters will be open. Everything will be back to normal. And so everybody's my, wait, looking wait, for product. Wait, my final word is, and mm -hmm. I say this to everyone, we have 4.5 people, million people listening to us right now. Yeah. I want them to hear this. Today, the best place to invest money is in a film. If, why, you're, if they got why, good. Why? Yeah. Why? Because the movie theaters are closed and they are not making the money on this film. But you, as an investor, if the film goes to Redbox, you are making the money that the theater would have made. So it's a wonderful investment. And you could get a lot at the back end. You could get a lot of money. I mean, I know some people that have made some pretty heavy cash. So out there, if you have a couple of bucks, you want to invest, invest in it is. film. With the right, with the right filmmaker, yeah. right now is definitely the time. There's a shortage of content, yes. and there, absolutely, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it is. Uh, we have. I, I, I think for Ash and Bone, I have the in, most impressive uh, distribution list I've ever had on a film. Um, and, uh, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll end up walking away with something really, really nice for that. But yeah, it's, it's essentially distributors that I haven't talked with before. Is that, that's the vampire one? No, that's the, it's, um, when I had Brett Miller write the script, I said, 
I want something. If you took, uh, you know, House of Wax and and Texas Chainsaw Massacre and 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 kind of combined them, uh, that's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, and I wanted a, 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 I love a little bit of moral story. And I usually write or Nancy writes the script, so it was kind of tricky with this one because somebody else wrote it. But Brett's such an amazing writer that uh, even the first draft was one of the best scripts I've ever read. Um, and now, you know, we, I think fifth or sixth was the one that, that ended up making the print. Uh, and it, it is, it is, it is really, really scary. Um, and it has that, that same house of wax feel, uh, um, and, and our villains are probably going to go to horror counts for the rest of their lives, uh, playing out the, that's the fun characters. that I like a lot. So we yeah. want to, I want to interrupt everybody. You guys, Lorene Landon just joined us in the chat room oh, and she says, hi. Lorene. So say hi to Lorene. Yeah. Say hi to Lorene. Love you, Lorene. I, I do not say hi to Lorene. I do this. I love and adore you, my Lorene. When am I going to see you? Listen, bitchette, if you're not booked for Thanksgiving, come here for dinner. We want you for Thanksgiving. You got to like gonna love cook it. You and eat, we're going to cook you and eat you as a turkey. No, really. <laughs> Lorene, here, our house, Palm Springs Thanksgiving. Let us know. So, so, uh, so you guys, we've known Harley since we moved to California. So it's like a little over like two and a half years, probably. And in the two and a half years, he's done a ton of movies, but. <laughs> He's got Bennett's song, Betrayed, Eternal Code, Obstru Obstruse, Agamon's yeah. Gate, and now he's got a Bennett song, Holiday. Plus, he's got all kinds of things you know, that are either in production I wanna, I wanna or pre-production. I want to see the film that you just gave the synopsis on. That's a Bennett yeah. song, Holiday. Which what's, what's it called? Say it again. A Bennett song, Holiday. Bennett, a Bennett song, Holiday. Is, yeah. is Bennett song the name of the family? Yeah, so uh, I, I play Cole Bennett, and my wife plays Susan Song. So Bennett Song is right. one of the last names, and that's our family. Yeah. Sounds like a story with a plot for a change. Yes, yes. Uh, a very cool plot. And if anybody who saw the original Bennett Song, uh, I'd say this one is funnier and even more heartwarming. Um, maybe a touch less romance because we, had, uh, uh, we, we, we got married in the first one, so it's kind of hard to outdo that. Good. I'm working on a film. Grab this one. You ready? Hold on to your nuts when I give you the title. Zombie drag queens from out of space. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. It is a, a hilarious script. It is so funny. So that's what I'm going to produce and start. To, I'm going to be in it. I'm going to play um, Moon Mother, Moon Mo Mother Moon. That's funny. I, uh, I am actually yeah. writing right now, and I decided I was going to give a shot at a different genre because normally all the heartwarming uh, feel-good movies are written by Nancy, and uh, and I'm writing a romantic comedy, uh, and it is it, it is I'm 44 pages in on the first draft, and uh, I catch myself laughing out loud all the time. It's uh, in the old uh, Cameron Diaz, uh, Christina Applegate style comedies. Um, and I really, really like it. Then they do a comedy. They did a movie. I forgot. What was it called? In Her Shoes or something. Yeah. 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 Well, my movie, Zombies, <clears throat> Drag Queens, I'm writing it. So if anybody out there likes my humor, you're going to love this movie because yeah. it's, full of, it's full of wisecracks of the 1950 slang kind of thing. It's very, very open. It's very, very naughty. But it's interesting. I can't give away the plot. But Angie Stevenson said she'd do it. Sadie Katz is in it. Wow, and so man. is Sherry. And so is Sherry Davis. And a few other people are coming on board to do this film. Very uh, I, I want I would like Marcel Waltz to uh, deck, uh, direct it. Deck, direct it. Direct it. He did uh, Blind, right? Yeah. Yeah, Blind is so. Have you seen Blind yet? I haven't, uh, but we've talked uh, about it before. It is it's so it is so good. It just came out yesterday. You know, it's like your movie you're making. It's a story with a plot mm. for, for a change. I'm sick of going to these horror movies where there's no plot. It's just everybody gets killed just stu too. stupidly. I mean, yeah. a guy walks in a the room, they cut his head off. No character establishment. Who is this guy yeah. who gives shit? They cut his head off. They don't even care about the characters. So no. kill them. We're not killing them. Who cares? Right. I, I can't. You know, I'm from old Hollywood, baby. I was in movies, you know, real movies. Yeah. And television, real scripts, real television. Yeah. And then now I'm thrown into this horror thing because I can't get work anywhere else. <laughs> and uh, 
it's it's just bewildering to me that they keep making the same plot and story over and over. No, at least you did the thing with the slave trade, the broad locked in the cage. You yeah. know, you you gave us some other stuff. Yeah. Uh, but most of the guys out there, it's the same story, just they change it. One time it's in a haunted house. One time it's in a restaurant. Yeah. One time it's in the moon. Yeah. It's, I'm done. I'm done with it. So yeah. is Churchill. Uh, I, 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 Churchill. Thomas, Churchill. Thomas Churchill said to me, he's done with it also. Mm. He's tired of that same plot. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I think, uh, you know, you if you go back, I remember Hitchcock talking about when you get to the kill, it's over. So, so the kill is not the payoff. Everything leading up to the kill is where you grab them. Anticipation. So, yes, exactly. That's what you want. You want to sit on pins and needles and, and worry about people and you want to care about people. That's how it becomes scary because you care about the people on screen. It doesn't work otherwise. Absolute character development. When I went to see Psycho in 1960, I went with my girlfriend, Hilda. And I remember when Janet Lee got killed. I had he a, really had a girlfriend. Yeah, I was, enga I was engaged to my She's girlfriend. from my home country, Hilda? She, yeah, Hilda was from Germany. Okay. Um, Hilda Schramm was her name. Mm -hmm. uh, and she was squeezing my hand so hard when Janet Lee was getting stabbed. And I said to Hilda, don't worry, she's not going to die. They don't kill the star 10 minutes yeah. in the movie. And my mouth fell open when Perkins put her in the trunk and threw it in the swamp. I said, oh, my God, she's really dead. She's out of the yeah. movie. Janet Lee is gone. How could that be? You know, I, I talked to Tony Perk, uh, Tony Curtis, who was a good friend of mine yeah. later, late in years. And I said to him, what did Janet think of that part? He said she really didn't agree with it. She really didn't want to do it. She was talked into it because mm -hmm. she said, you know, I'm the star of the movie. And they said, yes, but you, you have 10 minutes of film and then you're dead. Mm -hmm. So she said, I'll take a shot. But she was very afraid of that and very reluctant that it wouldn't work. And it did work. It, Absolutely. I, throughout the whole movie, I sat there depressed. Yeah, yeah, no, but but that's that's how you get people and that's how you grab them and, and keep them is with that. I, I remember when I did uh, Agramon's Gate, uh, you know, having some of the interviews and people were like, it was so nice to see a story and a plot and which one, was, what was, which, which one well, we went with, uh, which with one Sherry was Nelson. That? That's yeah. we went to which one Sherry was Nelson. that about the, sl the, the slave trade? One where I was bald with a big scar on my face. That's the one with Lorene in the hospital. Yeah, Lorene. Oh, Lorene oh, oh, okay. Blew okay. uh, my mind. Lorene yeah. was just was she's crazy. Still, oh, man. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, I love that film. Yeah, yeah her, I, I remember. Her and Jan got some nice awards for for scariest scene and, yeah. and best this and best that, but they were both electric. Well, Lorene is a damn good actress. I mean, yes, she, she is. She's been her. Um, you know, listen to this, Holly. Eat your heart out. Get ready for this one. Right. I just finished shooting a film with with Lorene. She played my wife, and there's really a scene in the it, wait. There's a scene in the bar where I'm sitting on the bar stool, and she's very sexy, and she slides mm -hmm. over to me, and she sits on my lap, and she starts kissing me, deep kissing me, and rubbing all over me. And I said to her after the shoot was over, I said, "The men in the audience are going to say, and that fucking fag, he gets to do that. <laughs> he gets to do that with her. And me, I'd pay a million bucks for it, and I don't do it. So yeah. Lorene, Lorene and I had a good chuckle about because I love her. You know, she is Lorene. so good. I have, I have, I have a my biggest script that I've ever written uh, that I'm holding right now uh, because I, I I don't even want to think about shooting it during COVID, and I need a little bit of a bigger budget. But I have such an amazing role for her in it and I, I, I she's so good anybody if you have a shot at getting her for your film just say thank you god and and move on because she is on fire so i have a question just in yeah. general first of all like because uh, i met dennis haskins at one of your premieres i, I don't mm -hmm. think he was in that movie that we i think it was at uh maybe it was at betrayed i don't know he was at one of your premieres really it's nice guy code, yeah and he's in both okay eternal code and he's in both of these uh, Bennett song movies, yeah. and and then you have um, Corbin Burnson, which for me, yeah. 
for me, Corbin Burnson, like in, in the world of horror, he did a movie called The Dentist, which freaked me the fuck out. It was so good. Uh, he was so good and creepy in it. And I'm afraid of Dennis in the first place. But he oh, also yeah. he was too. on he was on L.A. Law, though, which for me was like one of my my all time favorite shows. I don't know. That was, I was probably in college when that show came out. But he was so good in that show. How was it working with Corbin Burnson? Because for me, he's like like a list superstar. He is the best natural. Uh, I don't even want to say natural. He's the best actor I've ever seen live. So I okay. think uh, this guy is the character. He just lives it out loud. And I looked at some of the, uh, the lines he had because he plays the, uh, a businessman. And, and I was like, this is really heavy dialogue. And he's coming in for, you know, three days shooting 17 scenes. And I was scared because Nancy's writing is uh, is mouthy, and, uh, mouthy. and he just killed it. He just killed it, and I was like, "How does he do this?" And and I believed him every single time he was on on camera. I just believed everything he said and did. It, it, he's a special special kind of guy, that's for sure. Um, okay. Him and Sizemore, I think, floored me the most. Richard Tyson is another one. When you see him, you know, uh, across from you, you, he just sucks you into the scene. Oh, actually, we met Richard Tyson at one of your film premieres right. too. But I want to make a point. Yeah, I had difficulty on a few films with remembering my lines because I'm 80 years old. It's a little difficult. I had a yeah. hard time. Now I wear a plug in my ear. Oh. Jim, Jimmy feeds me my lines. Do you know what heaven is? Is because now I can act better. I mm -hmm. can I can do a scene in two minutes and never make a fuck up. Whereas yeah. everybody else, everybody else is dropping lines, saying the wrong thing, and screwing up to shoot. Now mm -hmm. I'm like in demand because now I I like I did a scene in a clown motel too, mm -hmm. where I'm at a pool table and it was a lot of dialogue. Mm -hmm. I would have screwed it up if I had to memorize it. So now I was able to work my acting ability because I was playing General Milan. So I. Yeah character without worrying about losing a line so you should tell these other actors you should have this on your set this is earplug just in the event that you have an actor who's having a difficult time let them use the earplug it you know stops, wait hang on it stops yeah. delaying delaying the film because yeah. when you delay film it's money so I, I suggest, you know, Robert De Niro wears it. Uh, Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. Cheryl. Cheryl. What's her name? The broad that, that we always talk about. The blonde, the old lady, actress. Oh, I don't know. The famous one who keeps winning Academy Awards. Meryl Streep. Meryl Streep. Everybody my age now or close to it are wearing this oh, one. Yeah. You don't see it. You slide it in. It's never shown or seen. Yeah. And it's just like a little insurance policy. Do you have trouble remembering lines, Harley? Because you're in a lot of films. Yeah, I guess you write a lot yeah, of but them. He's yeah. Smart. No, I think, uh, but I, but I definitely see what you're saying. Uh, I, I mean, I could see that that being something that would be really beneficial, uh, for sure. But uh, yeah, no, I, I, I I'm a uh, so far my my uh, my my uh, my memory is still pretty intact. So I think because uh, you're you're young. Them. You're young. <laughs> Yeah. Wait, till, wait till you get to be. I know you're only wait, 25. Wait, so when you, wait 55 25, yeah. years. <laughs> when, when, listen, he's 55. Okay. When you get no, to 25. Be, when you get to be 80, let's talk about how much you remember. In 55 years. Oh, I can imagine. In 55 years from now, you and I will talk about what yeah. it's like being 80. I'll That's come right. to you. I'll come to you through a crystal ball. Right. <laughs> okay. Oh, so as it as no, that's a good idea. And if it I works, mean, it, it works. It does work. And it's, it's beautiful because it gave me such confidence. You know, years ago, I did television. I did real movies, you know, and I had big lines, especially when I did, uh, I don't know which one it was, but one of them, I had a whole soliloquy of shit to say. Yeah. And I used to remember every single detail. I knew my moves. I knew my marks. I knew my camera. I knew how to position myself to get the best shot. Mm -hmm. And it was easy. But now at this age... It's, it's, it's like, so hang on. I, too I have many things to remember, although we don't have marks anymore, which is sad. Hey, oh, hey, you, have have marks. Do. you have marks. Well, I was on you a movie. On that no, movie. I was on a movie and I said, what are my marks? They said, we don't have any. I said, well, what do I do? They said, just walk around. I said, so <laughs> where's the camera? They said, the, up in the ceiling, the camera will follow you. I thought, oh my God, what am I? All right, go back Secur to Harley. Security film. I'm going to go back to Harley. Okay. So as a director, not now, now yeah. not as an actor, uh, yeah. But as a director, let's say you were going to make any movie you want. I don't give a shit what movie yeah. it is. And you had an unlimited budget. Who would you like to cast as a, that you would like to work with as a male and female lead if money was no object? 
Oh, man. You know, I, I have a list, so what, what I pick today probably won't be what I pick tomorrow, but um, I love Jodie Foster. I think she just yeah. killed me. I, I don't know what it is. She just makes me uh, she just makes me believe everything is real. Um, That's a um, good pick, and nobody's ever picked that before. She's a damn good really? actress. Damn Very good, good actress. actress. So good. She takes her breath away on screen. Um I see with for me the I, I love the De Niro's, Pacinos, the Denzels. I love the old the uh, older guard or whatever you want to call them at this point. Uh, they're so you know I, I I used to hear that less is more. My acting coaches would say less is more, and I would go back and I would watch these greats and I would say how is less more? Al Pacino is bigger than life and he's five foot five. Um, I don't even understand what you're saying. And, 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 and that's what I love when I can believe you, even though you're stretching the fabrics of reality, you are true to your character, somebody like that. Uh, and at their prime, you know, if you look at De Niro now, he has become a bit of a character caricature of himself. He plays the same mob guy kind of over and over. But if you look at his old work, from Cape Fear to uh, Raging Bull, any of, uh, I mean, Deer Hunter is one of my favorite films of all times. Um, great movie, great movie. I would, I would love to have had him then because the, he just blew my mind. Do you like what, Jason what, Statham? Wait, Ron on. likes Jason Statham. What, what, what I, I do. Know. For an action movie, absolutely. He's a, yeah. he's a great, great guy. Right Underrated up. star. Yes. What I find when I read a script, the character that I'm to play, if he's supposed to be bigger than life, I will be. But if he's not, I won't. So yes. This is the mistake a lot of older actors made. The, the, the script called for a demure, quiet, sensitive person, and they went in there like Norma Desmond. <laughs> Big life. And it came off crappy. So you must listen to your director, but you must also listen to your insides that tell you what this character is. Be that character. Yep. If the director doesn't like it, do like I do, ignore them, and do what you want. <laughs> <laughs> that comes to making films too, though. Uh, you know, if you look at Betrayed, Betrayed, I want the camera to be a fly on the wall capturing everything that happened. In Eternal Code, I wanted the camera to be a detective and pursue the action. So each film shouldn't be told the same either. Uh, from a directorial standpoint, from a camera standpoint, on Eternal Code, we shot almost the whole film on steady camera dolly and on uh, 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 Betrayed, the camera was mostly moving slightly, uh, uh, you know, pans and, and tilts uh, and some dolly because it was just a different story. And, 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 and it's told me, tell it this way. Uh, so, so, yeah, listen to your character, read the script. And and uh, and figure out what what is what is it calling for? What does it want from? Well, me? I firmly believe in rehearsal, and I believe yeah. in table readings. Amen. A, a table reading when the cast is there, we all get to interlock and mm -hmm. understand what our moves are. Then, of course, we use our fa faces. I believe in faces. Yeah. I told this to what's his name, uh, Greco, Mike. Uh, what's his name? Mike? Richard. Richard yeah. Greco. Yeah, Richard's I, cool I, cat. I, said, I said, Richard, learn something from me, an old bag. In our day, we didn't just sit there and read a line. We did this. Well, I don't know. Perhaps the sun over there is too strong. Mm -hmm. Act it. Show your face. Show yeah. your hands. Just don't say, oh, perhaps the sun is shining on us. Because who gives a fuck? That's boring. Yeah. yeah. They don't do that anymore. I mean, uh, they, I do, they do on my sets. We usually have two table reads and, and, uh, and then when you're on set, you rehearse without camera, then we place, and then you rehearse uh, to make sure that we have all the cameras uh, placed properly, uh, then we shoot. So by the time you shoot, you've run through this 20 times at least. Times. Yeah, but you know, you hey, know what? The, that's awesome. I, Actually, that's I, awesome. On one movie, I said, where's my key light? And the guy looked at me like I was speaking French. He had no idea what a key light was. And I thought to myself, okay, I said, where is my main light? They said, they're all over. And yeah. I thought, okay, that's why I look like shit Scary. in these movies. I look like an old man with tons of wrinkles uh, in these movies because I'm not lit properly. Um, that, yeah. You know, if it's, if it's a horror part, 
like uh, when I did uh, Big Friggin' Rat, I was playing a, a real Brooklyn killer guinea, That's you know, fine. a real bad guy. So yeah. I didn't mind. My makeup was made to look rough and tough and evil. Yeah. So I didn't mind the poor lighting because it really helped my character. Oh, yeah. But if you're playing somebody's father in a nice yeah. house with a wife, light me probably. I can't wait to hear uh, when you watch a Bennett song holiday because uh, I'm gonna love it. I could tell. <clears throat> thank you. We we got so much feedback on especially the cinematography and the lighting on that one so far that uh, I'm really curious to to hear your thoughts on it. Well, we're definitely gonna when watch I, it when I when I go to the movies. I'll send you guys a screener. Thank you. That'd when, be great. We, when we did go to the movies, I used to talk about it on the way home. And I'd say to Jimmy, I didn't care for the lighting. The lighting was good. I didn't care for the director. The director was okay. You know, I look at everything, not just yeah. the actor or the story, because we're in the business. Yeah. Um, I would love to work with you one day, and I'm not pushing for a job because I got plenty oh, of Oh, no. I, I actually have Only because you do table readings and you care about lighting. And I really suspect that you and I, would work well as a director because we felt powerful. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, like I said, I, I thought of you when I did the tale of tales, uh, uh, it was not my project originally. And the storyline was kind of already in place when they brought me in to play Nick. Uh, and, and, but I thought of you the whole time I was doing it because it's such an incredible setting. Uh, and it has a feel of a kind of grungy nineties, eighties, even though it isn't, it has that feel because, you know, when you leave the city and get a little bit outside in the in, 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 in some of the areas, it's almost as if you took a step back in time sometimes. And this place is that. And it's kind of like if you took uh, Sons of Anarchy, Sopranos and, um, you know, Law and Order and you put that in together and, and, uh, and that's kind of what you end up with. Uh, has similarities to maybe the Ozarks at times. Oh, I love Ozark. That's yeah, show. yeah, and I thought of you. I seriously thought of you. I even told uh, my writer, uh, the my co-writer, uh, that 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 we penciled in everything else with. And I said, I have somebody who who would be an awesome guy, maybe a pimp or maybe something. Or uh, uh, and and I thought of you. So so we'll have to revisit that. But I be good as a pimp. I'm a good pimp. I have played a gangster. I played a priest twice. Mm -hmm. In Clown Fear, I played a minister. And on television, I think it was, um, I forgot who, show, not Charlie's Angel. One of those shows, I played a, a, yeah. a, a Catholic priest. The rest of my career has been a mob, a hitman, a killer, yeah. a mafia. Now they have me in a movie, which I'm not allowed to discuss, where I play the head of the mob, the head mafioso, the capo to capo. And yeah. I said, now, now that I'm an old bag and I look like a killer, and with my Brooklyn accent, they love it. So... I would like to play something different, like a like a ballerina or a pimp. <laughs> I like you. I like you as Lucky a pimp. Bunny. <laughs> so hold on, you guys. First a of all, pimp. I could be a good. You guys pimp. can follow Harley on Twitter. He's at Harley the Swede. H a r l e y t h e s w e d e. What are you on Instagram? Wait, wait, uh, before we go any further, Harley, thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate. Oh, it. thank you, thank you for for being a, a sport about it. But uh, uh, yeah, we we definitely have to have that talk uh, on on the side here because I think that the TV series is going to do really well uh, on Instagram. I'm official Harley Wallen and I'm Harley Wallen on Facebook. I'm probably most interactive on Instagram and Facebook. I'm terrible with Twitter. It's not, it's not the uh, con conversational, I guess. Mm -hmm. There you go. So also you guys then a Bennett song holiday is having its premiere on the eighth, right? Tell everybody where they go again to watch the premiere. So this is at Sia. Uh, so it's S Y A. Uh, or CYA, uh, and I know that me, Corbin, Bryce Xavier, uh, and Cal Calhoun Koenig, uh, we're all going to be on for this. And a bunch of our other cast, they won't be on video, but they will be able to chat because you have a, a chat option, so you can talk about the film as you watch it. And then it's going to be everywhere on the 10th. Uh, so whatever, wherever you get your VOD, they'll, it'll be everywhere. There you go, guys. And after you watch our Bennett song holiday at the premiere, uh, you want to go back and watch. Wait, what is that again? Give me the date. I lost it. The 8th, November 8th. November 8th. 
and I, it comes out worldwide November 10th. And you're sending yep. us a, you're sending us a link. Yeah, he's going to send yeah. us a link. Good. And also, you guys, you want to watch the first movie? It's called uh, a Bennett. It's just called Bennett Song, right? I want to see that. And then, you guys, when you ha- want to watch other cool things, you, he's got all these other great movies that you can watch: Agamon's Gate, Abstruse, Eternal Code, Betrayed, Bennett Song. We saw Agamon's Gate, Eternal Code, and Betrayed. They're all a lot of fun. You'll like them, and they've got lots of recognizable. From some well, what, of your what I like films. about Harley's films is he has characters in his films that we have met and know in, in life. Yeah. And he brings to you, the audience, the insides of that character. That's good. And keep that kind yeah. of work up. I like that work. I don't I, want, I don't I, like a shallow cardboard <laughs> flat character. We, we, also, we yeah. also want to wish you a very happy birthday and hope that you happy and Katie have a nice again. evening you. tonight for your birthday. And, and you give Katie a gigantic hug for me and tell her I will I'm do that. Not, I'm dying to work with her. She could play my daughter also. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. She's fabulous. I so, love Kat. So have a happy birthday. Good Thanks. luck with the Bennett song holiday. And uh, please sell, say hello to Katie for us. And, yes. And uh, enjoy yourself. And everybody go watch the song and follow Holly. Uh, go watch the uh, Bennett song holiday and follow Harley in social media. And we want to thank you for coming on the show. And happy birthday. Happy thank birthday, you. And Harley. Appreciate it. Cheers to you guys. Bye, absolutely. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Hopefully. And everybody in the chat room, thank you so much for tuning in. We had a great time. You guys were very interactive. It's a lot of fun. Love seeing all the new people in the chat room. Um, so uh, everybody have a fabulous weekend. We'll see you next week. I forgot who we have coming on the show. We have uh, Verdeen White coming on from Earth, Wind, and Fire. I know that. And uh, it'll be a lot of fun. So, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Rebel, thank you so much. Everybody have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay happy. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Yeah, we in the mix. Yeah, we in the mix. It's another episode. Here we go. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Interviewing the hottest news that you was up to the celebrities. Make sure to subscribe so you can get notified weekly. Jimmy Star, he's the king of cool. Ron Russell, he's a gorgeous dude. Chat room is live and you would be a fool not to vibe with us at the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Come watch it live on W4CY Radio. Miss some past episodes? Download on iTunes. The Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. It's the Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell. Oh.